Hello to my professor and my classmates in my philosophy class. Today,、uh, I'm going to talk about、um, the story of Wang Yangming, a great philosopher. He was a statesman who proved to be very successful at governing. He was also a general who won great battles against rebellion. He was also a used-to-be believer and master in Buddhism and Taoism. And later incorporated both schools to his philosophy. Wang Yangming's philosophy saved and developed the study of heart that was founded by Lu Zhiyuan, who was in Song Dynasty, a very to Zhu Xi. Wang Yangming's school of study of heart still lives vibrantly today, which extends from Ming Dynasty to modern age. And that is nearly 500 years. His thoughts were written and recorded by his disciples in Chuan Xi Lu. We could see that as an equivalent to the Analects to Confucius. A lot of people in the world still regard Wang Yangming as a sage. Some see him as God almost. But I personally think, if I'm to do this presentation and really to evaluate his thoughts, we have to take him as an ordinary man, at least a human,、um, just like us. And I want to talk about his young age experience a little bit, because I believe that period of of his life really impacted his、um, aspiration and his path to really. Um, develop the study of heart. Aspired at young age, ask ourselves, what are or what were our dreams or aspirations? Do we have when we were twelve? If I ask myself, I have to admit, back then I was just very obsessed with computer games, and I believe one of my dreams back then was to really、um, just really run away from my parents to be free, so I can. So, so I can just play computer games 24/7. So, what did Wang Yangming do? At the age of 12, he asked his teacher, "What is the topmost priority in life?" His teacher's answer would not probably differ from many of Chinese men back then. His teacher said, "It's got to be studying hard in order to pass the imperial examination." Well. What he didn't say is that, of course, after you pass the imperial examination, you can be, you can be a bureaucrat,、uh, which will bring honor to your family, which your life will be fulfilled because you will get a lot of money, a lot of power and title and all that. Imagine, if you heard that when you were twelve, how would you respond? This is Wang Yangming's response at the age of twelve, ladies and gentlemen. He said, "I don't think so. Maybe it is to study in order to be a sage." So when he was twelve, he has already aspired himself to become a sage. So when he was twelve, he had already aspired himself to be a sage. Wow, I mean, itself was an accomplishment already. Ming and Wang Yangming's teaching. He believed aspiration is the most important key in life. He said, "Study without aspiration is just like planting a tree without its root. Life of it could not even start." This tree analogy、um, is very、um, uh, popular in his teachings, as we just said, is the、um, the fundamental. Um, principle of ethics and and、uh, morals and, and virtues, but、uh, the ultimate goal is that we can we can go zhi zhi, which is these four characters over here. So what does it mean? It basically means go wu means to get a handle of things. Zhi zhi, which is the last two, is to arrive at knowledge. So Zhu Xi clearly believed, in order to arrive at knowledge, we have to get a hand of everything. We have to investigate into everything, 
and then we can arrive at knowledge. Well, while both their goals, um, Zhu Xi and um, Lu Jiuyuan's goal is to arrive at knowledge, they had very different approaches, as we just said. Well, Wang Yangming concluded both of their, um, their arriving at knowledge in these six characters. That is, study in order to arrive. Arrive at good knowledge or superior knowledge. This character Liang means superior. So what knowledge are we really talking about? What knowledge? We have two different knowledge here. One is called ordinary knowledge. In Chinese, it's Changzhi. I personally like to think it as in indirect knowledge. Why? Because most of them are told by others, parents, teachers, friends, or books, etc. The second is real knowledge. Real knowledge, we can see it as an approximation of Wang Yangming's Liangzhi. Why? Because it basically means direct knowledge. It is experienced physically or mentally by yourself. Let's do a very simple comparison here. So everyone in our lifetime probably heard um, many times um, from our parents that you should eat or you should, you should lose weight, you should do whatever. So that we can see it as an ordinary knowledge because it is told by others, but we might not really appreciate it. You know, we all know a lot of experience that we are told by, by our teachers. But the moment they told us, we probably did not really feel um, very um, obvious or really know what they are talking about until we arrive at a point where we actually experience it. Then we actually know what they were talking about, but not back then. So you should eat versus imagine you are starving. So if you are starving, even though no one is there to tell you that you should eat, you will, you will just eat automatically. Why? Because you're hungry. So the latter, you can see it as a real knowledge, while the first, you can see it as an ordinary knowledge. So the big fight between uh, Zhu Xi and Lu Xiangshan just left Wang Yangming 300 years later. Who is correct there? Wang Yangming just said, you know what? I'm just gonna try both and see which one works for me. Unfortunately, he tried Zhu Xi first. It comes a very famous um, story. Um, so Wang Yangming studied Zhu Xi's philosophy of uh, Ge Wu Zhi Zhi. Um, he's like, okay, let's Ge Wu. So that means let's investigate um, into things. So he just went to this bamboo forest very happily. And um, he, so what he did was uh, he actually sat in the forest and just investigated li literally uh, one by one um, of the, um, the, the bamboos. So each branch by each branch, uh, each part by each part. And guess what? After two weeks later, there's a surprise that fell ill. And uh, rumor has it um, that eel really damaged his lung and um, reduced his expected age. So his conclusion was very simple. Zhu Xi's teaching results in an unclear and unsystematic form of knowledge. Imagine if you investigate only the bamboo forest, how many bamboos are there? that you can investigate all of them um, in your lifetime. That's probably not realistic. Second, it stops people from exercising their, their moral knowledge into action. Why? Because Ge Wang Wu basically means investigating every external thing is simply unrealistic due to the limited lifespan of human beings versus unlimited information things in reality. There's no way 
that we as human beings can have sufficient time to investigate into everything. And also, it did make him sick, both literally and medically. Rumor has it, the lung disease he suffered from the bamboo investigation severely reduced his expected age. So he inherited Master Lu's um, study of heart and pursued Li, which is a pattern, from investigating himself, which is his own heart, literally in English. We talked many times um, about heart. So what is heart, really? Let's explain it by a story um, um, in Wang Yangming's book. Because this sentence is really uh, long to translate, so I'm just going to make it short and simple for you to understand. So basically, remember how Lu Jiuyuan said, my heart is the universe, and the universe is my heart. So there was one day Wang Yangming traveled with, um, with his friend to a town. And uh, so his friend just pointed at, um, at a flower tree and asked him, well, if you say your heart is the universe and, your universe, uh, and the universe is your heart, you are saying things that outside of universe doesn't exist. Then. So how is this flower tree blooming related to my heart? And the master Wang said, well, while you are not seeing this flower, this flower is silent and unseen with your heart. When you see this flower, the color of the flower started to become clear. Then you will know the flower is not outside of your heart. It is within your universe. Um, I know this is kind of hard to understand, um, but basically just, just think of it um, hard as your own universe. The translation between Chinese, especially ancient Chinese, to, um, to modern English, uh, there are some gaps. Unity of knowing and action is a major contribution from Wang Yangming to study of heart. So basically, he claims that knowing and doing are inseparable. This is an explanation um, he said in his Chuan Shi Lu. There never have been people who know but do not act. Those who know but do not act simply do not yet know. The explanation follows. The first kind of person is described by one as there is also a type of person who is vague and irresolute. They engage in speculation while suspended in a vacuum and are unwilling to apply themselves to any concrete actions. Sounds very familiar, right? <laughs> when we procrastinate, we do that. So the second scenario is described by Wang. There is a type of person in the world who foolishly acts upon impulse without engaging in the slightest thought or reflection because they always act blindly and recklessly it is necessary to talk to them about knowing. So that is basically a very diligent worker who goes to work 24-7, um, uh, but without knowing his actual goal in life, he just works, 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 but uh, still finds very um, pointless in his life. So what is actually the harmony or the unity of knowing and doing that Wang Yangming um, point, uh, uh, about that Wang, that Wang Yangming thinks? Basically, quote, he said, Ru hao hao se, like loving a lovely sight. So he's basically, naturally, when, when we see this kind of beautiful landscapes, we just like it. Nobody dislikes it. Um, by their nature. So the question to ask is, how do we recognize whether it is a lovely sight? Are we naturally in our DNA that we love this kind of nature um, thing? Or we are told by, um, by authorities or by our parents, by education that, look, this is a view that you should appreciate and be happy. 
Um, I believe Wang Yangming uh, doesn't mean this. He's basically saying, um, um, he's basically saying that naturally we have this inclination um, to appreciate the sight, and you don't need to tell yourself, "Oh, this is so beautiful." Therefore, I have to be happy and appreciate it. Same concept goes to um, like hating a hateful order. How do we know again? It is a hateful order. Um, there's a typo there, but um, so how do we know? Are we already um, trained or told that certain types of smell is bad? Or again, in our DNA, we recognize um, some smells as bad smells because they may cause some danger to our life or, or will make us feel um, uncomfortable. Before we dive into function and essence, which is another um, another um, topic in his philosophy, let's just wrap up the unity of knowing and doing again. Um, so basically, I personally speculate that Wang's zhi xin he basically means that we can we can perform certain tasks or evaluate certain scenario that is either in our dna which is you know like natural um reaction and all that natural judgment or is like um the men or or like the mentions um four sprouts that people are born with them uh, people are born with those four sprouts um the sense of righteousness and uh, the sense of um of um of rights and all that so i believe um from from deduction since wang yangming learned um a lot from confucianism especially mencius i believe he believes in um the inclination towards this kind of natural uh, natural selection and reaction of things is exactly um what he means in the unity of knowing and the doing. So next we will be talking about function and essence, ti he ben. Um, when we talk about knowledge, we have to um, talk about this. Why? Because it's um, because these two are the components of of matters, and uh, also the um, the things. His disciple can ask, ancient erudites used the static state of heart as essence or content and used the moving state of heart as function or form. Is it right? Master Wan said, no, essence and function belong and are incorporated to one body. However, essence overarches functions, although they are interchangeable. Essence is the root of a tree and function is a branch of a tree. To this concept later. Let's take a break and um, just really appreciate this painting and uh, ask ourselves um, two questions. How many faces do you see and how many happy faces do we see? So let me tell you something. Science has proven that if you see five faces, you're smarter than average. Four faces, you're average. Three faces, you're mentally retarded. No, I'm joking. There's no such science. <laughs> There's no such science. Don't let anyone tell you that. But from this very small activity, we can tell that we are all humans here and uh, we all have two eyes to appreciate this painting. And we all have judgments. We all have ability to think. We're the same nature. But we are very different in terms of views. Everyone sees things differently. Now, let's echo that with the content and form we just talked about in Wang Yangming's philosophy and really just rethink how we think about this world. Wang Yangming promotes a life of quality not just quantity. 
So in in Chuan Shilu, one of his disciples asked this very interesting question. Uh, this is going to be very very hard to translate into English. It's going to be a very long sentence. So I'm just going to talk about uh, its main point. So basically, his、um, disciple asked,、um, "I heard you, dear master, that、um, you use very fine gold quantity、uh, to do the metaphor." Um, um, for the two sages,、uh, for 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 the sages,、uh, so one is Kongzi, the second is Yao and Shun.、Um, so he said, Master, you said Kongzi could be、um, worth eight thousand of fine gold. Yao and Shun, they worth、um, a hundred.、Um, Out of a hundred, which is ten thousand gold. So I feel very, very uncomfortable. And master just said, "Well, you are now always talking about its form. The form takes many kinds, as we just said. But the key is not about the quantity, but it's about the quality, the interior quality of things." Kongzi and Yao Shun are all sages. They all seek truth, and、uh, they are all called、um, great philosophers. So we only focus on their、um, quality, not just quantity. I think this really reminds、uh, us of our grades.、Um, so say our grades are out of a hundred. So I chose this example because I think it's very, re-、uh, very re-、um, relatable、um, to us as students because we really、um, value our grades, right? So say, say like Kongzi is a student and he got eighty out of a hundred. Yao and Shun got a hundred out of a hundred. What are your thoughts? Do you think it's、um, it's justifiable? Would you feel that?、Uh, well, I think Kongzi is probably worth. Ten thousand out of a hundred, but Yao and Shun probably is ninety out of a hundred. Master just said that. Do not get caught up by the number, but the quality behind the number. When we think about、um, today's economy, we could say, well,、um, say China has a very high GDP, but how about the health behind those GDP? Um. So that really、um, offers another perspective when we when we look at these things, and I think that's one of the attributes of this school of philosophy that is really worth、um, noting. So, what can we learn from Wang Yangming? As we just talk about how we perceive the painting very differently, I think everyone agrees that、um, we are different, but we are all human. But do we choose when we come to the、um, when we talk about our, our our understanding of the world or our world view? Do we choose to be passively accepting others' understanding of the world, or do we take the initiatives to construct? Our own worldview. Wang Yangming is the latter. In political science, there's a term called ideology, which basically means it's a massive, massive um, um, state-level worldview. So, some political party or some organizations, in their interest, they offer the society their Um, explanation of the world and rules, and whoever explains the world basically controls the world. So one society's ideology is like the overarching rule of the or,、um, of the nation. When ideology infiltrates to individuals, the term changes to worldview, which every one of every one of us has, unless you are from Stone Age. Ever since you were born, your family, friends, education, and society just really infiltrate their their plethora of notions to your brain. Therefore, no matter if you realize it or not, you are in some 
in some sense, to some extent, were brainwashed by your surroundings. I think Wang Yangming really showed us an alternative way um, to live and to think. Because Wang Yangming is different from commoner. Um, so one commoner may just be unselectively admitting all those notions and uh, worldview or ideologies without questions. Wang Yangming is not the same. He basically constructs them um, and he takes the initiatives to construct them. Although the worldview the commoner accepts may be validated by society in a very you know long period of time, but he was thrown into that worldview by external force. That person has already lost his initiatives and himself, we can say, at a point. Although that force, that external force, may show him some promise, but at the end, he will realize that the world or the worldview that was given to him was sadly a prison. Unfortunately, most of us are locked in that prison without even noticing it. Latter, like Wang Yangming, he has his own initiatives and decision making. His subjectivity is gradually formed through his lifetime. This opens up many possibilities of the world because the world will be exposed to you, although at the end your worldview may be still inherited from, from, uh, from ancient wisdom. Like Wang Yangmin did, he chose Lu Xiangshan's study of heart, right? But he built on it and developed on it without knowing it, uh, with knowing it. But long before that acceptance, you will have sufficient time to think what it really means to you. And more importantly, as your worldview is not given, but acquired and explored by yourself, the power and wisdom you gain from that differed very significantly from the majority of our society. The unity of knowing and doing is exactly the process of this worldview construction. In terms of knowing, the emphasis is to challenge the old content of notion and construct a newer and adaptive and functional worldview. As for doing, the emphasis is really interacting with outer world to consolidate your understanding and notion in reality. This process actually counterproves um, is is actually counterproving um, that knowing and doing are inseparable, because knowing is already the process of acquiring and the construction of meaning itself is already a doing. Doing or action is a demonstration and completion of that meaning. Thus, it cannot be separated from knowing. So what can we really from one? That was one part that really challenged our worldview and really opened up, I think, at least a new frequency um, that we see this world. And uh, I believe it really provides us with a more clear and rational mind so we can really rethink and reevaluate information like donald trump himself said too many fake news right and really just take initiatives of your life define yourself instead of being defined by anyone else we always get this question that why wang yangming ended up um, with um, as an uh, as a confusion where while he was already very um, baptized himself in um, in Buddhism and Taoism I believe um, it's not very hard to explain 
Um, basically, in one sentence, his filial piety hard tells him that. And following his logic in his um, study of heart, he just obeys it and just follows it. And that is Confucianism. Confucianism. There was one story that was very interesting. It's that he went to a temple and um, asked a monk if he misses his family. Um, of course, our our wise philosopher one um, um, persuaded the monk to go back home while in tears. Because basically he said, he went to the monk and asked him, do you miss your family? And uh, no lies, no drama, just tell me the truth. And the monk, since he still has a memory of, of his family and love and filial piety and all that, he just said yes. So why am I mean, just asking me, how could, how could you lie to yourself that you can just stay here and without fulfilling your filial piety? So basically, um, I hope that um, gives um, uh, the answer to a lot of people asking me that why Wang Yangming is considered a Confucian, why he chose to be a Confucian in the end. I think um, we can use this uh, quote um, from, actually from me, I wrote that. <laughs> um, basically, uh, I'm just going to read it first. Um, I am not an atheist. I am just en route to look for my God. I think there was, uh, this was the sentence um, when I talked to my professor um, for this philosophy class um, once during the term while we were chatting. Um, I think Wang Yangming was always en route um, to look for the true knowledge, the zhen zhi, um, or the liang zhi, the good knowledge the fine knowledge. And uh, really, I think he carried that as uh, aspiration from his young age. And he was, he always stick with it. He never moved. Um, he never changed his goal. And uh, in order to pursue that goal, he, he tried many ways. For example, as I said, um, he was very interested in Buddhism, Taoism, and Confucianism at the same time. He just want to really make use of them and find the answer, find the, the truth or the God um, in religious term. I think that sentence can really just give us, um, maybe just really get us going um, with our own definition of life, our own road, our own um, belief. I'm not going to use religion. Uh, in this uh, in this scenario and uh, thank you so very much for watching i hope this video has provided you um with some with some personal insights and my personal um experience and thoughts on wang yang means philosophy and how we can really um benefit or make use of his highlights in philosophy to 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 live a better life thank you so much for listening to my boring voice for 35 minutes wow <laughs>